I have an interesting welding class project to share. A friend is restoring a 1942 South Bend lathe that originally came from a U.S. Navy ship, it has a broken handle. In identifying the material, I did some research, and from original blueprints and instructions that came with the lathe, this material is called semi-steel. Metallurgically, semi-steel is some interesting stuff. In looking at the ends of the break, it struck me that this was very similar to cast iron, and semi-steel, it turns out, is actually made of cast or pig iron combined with scrap metals to lower the carbon level of cast iron or pig iron to the point that it will behave a lot like a cast steel or a steel product. So the process that we'll end up using to repair this will be twofold. I'm going to prep the metal and grind V's on each side from a center line of the brake. The goal in this case is to find a filler material that is compatible with both the cast iron or pig iron elements of this handle and the steel or scrap steel that was used to lower the carbon content and make the metal behave more like a steel casting. So of course we turn in this case to weld mold and I've worked with the weld mold cast iron rods. Before I actually repair this piece, I need to select the right filler material. Based on the metallurgy, we're looking at a piece that will probably behave a lot like cast iron. And on the other hand, it has a lower carbon level. So we're talking about a filler material that would be compatible with a mild steel or a basic steel casting as well. We have several weld mold products to choose from in this case. And there's a new rod that we're going to try. This is available in electrode stick, the 760 or 7500 series rod. For the tick process, we could use the 700 filler rod, or more likely, especially with the steel that's involved here, in addition to cast iron, we'll end up using the 750 filler rod. The 700 is uh, almost pure nickel and works really well with cast iron. The 750 is uh, a cast iron repair rod that will also work with mild steel and other steels to combine casting in iron with those products. This semi-steel piece is a mess. It has three coats of paint on it. And we're going to mask off that handle, the handle itself. Our first step is going to be to glass bead the piece. We'll take a look at it at that point. And then, of course, for TIG welding, we'll have to clean up the piece thoroughly in the weld zone. It's amazing what 10 minutes worth of glass beading will do. The only issue here is that when we go to TIG weld in particular, our TIG welding process requires a surface that's free of any silica from the glass beading. And of course, in this case, we'll be using the HTP Invertig 221 machine for both our stick welding and for TIG. We programmed 64 different programs to accommodate the various welding projects that you might have. And under the program mode, first I bring that up, I've set the program for my repair piece weld as number 20. Under program mode, I simply turn the encoder to 20. It's now brought up the program that I was looking for, TIG mode. I've set it for remote. That's the 2T. My power source has me at 150 amps. AC is off. Slope down, 0.1. Free gas, 0.4. Post gas, 5 seconds, 150 amps. That's the program, number 20 in this case. It's set to 20. This is the HTP water-cooled torch. The alignment of these pieces is touchy, so I've gone ahead and cleaned this piece up thoroughly. And I'm cleaning it now with denatured alcohol. I wire brushed it using stainless. I'm going to make my tack welds with tape process. Just have more control. These pieces are real susceptible to movement, so using an electrode with stick welding applies pressure and would make it difficult to keep these pieces in alignment. 
So we're going to go ahead and do this. The pieces are all cleaned up and I'm putting them back in position now. We're going to do this in TIG mode. Okay, I have my TIG torch set up. I'm going to use the foot remote and the Pyrex gas cup. I have the gas lens that I'm using, 330 seconds electrode. The filler rod is uh, weld mold 750, 1 16th inch. I want a lot of uh, sharpness to that point on the electrode. I want to be able to stay away from the metal and not move this out of position in the process of making my two tack welds. My gas is 100% argon and the SCFH is set at about 20. Argon bottle open. So let's go ahead and tack this together and get started with the welding process. Well, we've done the tack weld. And as you can see, it's a strong bond. This is one side of it. I'll do the other side in a minute, but I can actually take it out of the vise now. Okay, I've actually put a small weldment right here in this area to bridge the gap slightly. And I've ground this so that I have a nice clean surface to work with. And I'll go ahead and tack this side before I fill in the rest of the material in the V grooves. Well, we have an interesting development here. And this is what metallurgy is all about. After tack welding the piece and watching the way it behaved using the 750 rod, nickel and iron, I realized that this metal, the semi-steel, is actually behaving more like steel than iron. Broke the piece loose at the tack welds, gone back to the grinder, and taken the metal down to the base casting again. Got rid of the uh, carbon material, and we're now back down to the base metal. And I'm going to select a different filler rod for this particular application. The metal is behaving more like a steel. So let's go for a different choice. I did some research. Based on the way the grinding and hardness appears on this piece, I'm going to try weld molds 888, descriptive of uh, weld mold 888. It has a unique chemical analysis. It will respond to almost all tool steel heat treatments and retain its endowed superior mechanical properties without cracking. Weld deposits are dense, porous free, smooth, crack desensitized, resistant to corrosion and heat scaling up to 1200 degrees. It's designed for joining both heat treatable and non-heat treatable steels. You can heat treat it following uh, the weld process. And the low coefficient of friction of 888 makes it ideal for buildup and surfacing on shafts, bearing surfaces, and valves. It's ideally suited for high temperature applications such as steam turbine buckets, blades, and covers. It has a very high tensile strength as welded. So uh, we're looking at this piece in the weld areas will end up around 120,000 PSI or as high as that, which is more than uh, the base metal itself. We're going to get some dilution, and you always do it uh, around the weld area. So, in using something that uh, hardens uh, to 120,000 PSI, we're looking at some dilution from the adjacent metal, but we're still going to be well above mild steel rod, which many people would be inclined to use. We're not. This specialty rod, again, is niche rod for the welding industry, specifically the tool and die industry. It's a machinable filler, and it has an elongation of 40%, which is really quite ductile, and that'll be useful. Its alloy type is super strength chromium nickel, so we're going to end up with a very strong piece when we're done. It is recommended for use with shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, gas tungsten arc welding, and flux core arc welding. We're using GTAW with 100% argon in the DC mode. 